something more treacherous is going on. I'm Joey Greco, and this is Cheaters. You know, he kind of motivated me and made me want to be a better person just because, you know, he was going to school to be a lawyer. You know, we met through mutual friends and everything, and everybody thought so highly of him and thought he was really great. And But then, like, after we got married, after, like, within the first year and a half, two years, everything went downhill. He stopped going to school. He dropped out. He started kind of depending on me to take care of everything. Well, he started working at an apartment complex, and he keeps strange hours, and they call him in often, and I understand that, but it's gotten to the point where he won't answer his phone when I call. He'll go out with some friends after work and everything, and he won't invite me. He won't tell me who all he's with, and he, his story's kind of shifty, you know. He'll say one thing, and then he'll turn around and change it to something else. There was that one time I got in his car and it smelled like perfume. It didn't smell like my perfume, it smelled like somebody else's. He made up some story about how he gave this girl a ride to work or home from work or something. And but it's like, why couldn't you have just come out and told me that? Things have just gotten so strange and he's gotten so distant that if he is cheating on me, then that's it. That's it, I'm done, I'm gone. I'm out of there. I can't do it anymore. And it's just becoming too much work. It's a lot. That's the last thing. If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, Cheaters Detective Agency may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Investigative charges may apply. Matt Van Horn, age 32. A supervisor accused of maintaining a relationship with another woman. Investigation day two. With an itinerary of the suspect's supposed daily routine in hand, detectives set up shop around the apartment complex where he's employed as the maintenance supervisor. At closing time, perimeter units spy their subject, Matt Van Horn, mulling around the leasing office. Through the darkness, a figure appears next to Van Horn. The shape reveals itself to be that of an unknown female. The suspect grabs the woman and kisses her. He then retreats into an alcove for a moment before returning to his awaiting companion. The couple walk hand in hand to their respective cars and depart the job site. Mobile units follow the cars to a local bar. They walk inside entwined in each other and on the patio they enjoy a post-work drink while laughing with each other. The frivolity doesn't last very long before Van Horn and his date pay the bill and return to their cars. It must be hard to say goodbye, as evidenced by the amount of time the two spend canoodling with each other. They eventually pry themselves from one another and depart the bar's parking lot, going their separate ways for the evening. Investigation Day 3. Agents remain alert outside the Van Horn home. Erin alerts the surveillance team that her husband has just stormed out after an argument. Perimeter units catch sight of the suspect as he enters his car and departs. A pursuit ensues that leads detectives to an unfamiliar residence. Van Horn parks his car and makes his way to the front door of the house. He knocks and is let in. Van Horn remains inside for more than an hour before the door opens and the owner of the home, unsurprisingly the woman from earlier surveillance, escorts him out. The woman is identified as Kaylee Henderson, Van Horn's supervisor. On the front porch, the suspect and his boss share a long and amorous embrace goodbye. As Van Horn heads to his car, however, Henderson decides it's a good time for some tawdry exhibitionism. She opens her silk robe and reveals what her man will be missing. Driven by lust, Van Horn rushes back to Henderson for a few more forbidden moments. Van Horn eventually returns to his car and returns home early in the morning. Investigation Day 5. Continuing to stake out the workplace of the suspect, agents spot Van Horn cleaning up before leaving for the night. He enters his car and is followed to a local pub. He walks inside and is happy to see his romantic cohort awaiting him at a table. 
He sits down and the two begin their seductive banter. They hold hands and kiss in the confines of the booth. Ms. Henderson is exceptionally exultant after prodding her melancholy subordinate into a kiss. Hoping to extricate Van Horn from his doldrums, Henderson jumps up from the table and dances in front of him. She tries her best at seduction as she grinds upon him. Van Horn seems to be amused, if not a bit disturbed by the scene. Eventually, the two exit the establishment, revealing Henderson's state of inebriation. At his car, Henderson drops her purse, and it's up to Van Horn to take charge, shoving his toasty tart into the passenger seat while picking up her lost items. Van Horn's sense of duty is continued in this recorded phone call with Aaron. Back at Henderson's house, Van Horn helps his intoxicated mate to her front door, and after two hours, investigators decide to end the surveillance and compile the evidence for Aaron's edification. Coming up, the confrontation. With her husband's blatant betrayal captured on videotape, Cheaters calls upon Aaron for a meeting. Abound with apprehension, Aaron prepares herself for the results of the investigation. Aaron, thanks for your call. Thanks for being with us tonight. I know that this is an extreme situation. It's a holiday. Our detectives do have information that they thought it would be important for you to review. Are you prepared to find out what that information entails? Yeah, yeah, I definitely want to see it, definitely. Aaron, early in our investigation, we had a detective at Matt's place of business. As he is there finishing up a job, a woman approaches, there's a brief conversation, they share a kiss, he goes inside the office, she waits, and a short time later, he comes out. They walk to their cars holding hands, and from there, travel to a bar. And sometime later, after partaking of some libations, he walks her out to the parking lot. They seem to have some difficulty extricating themselves from one another's company before he finally does, and they each go their separate ways. On this evening, he's at home. Evidently, he got a call. We followed up with you that evening, yeah. and that's when, once again, he had told you that he had to go into work because there was a service call. But the only place there seemed to be a service call was at this residence. Is that her again? He goes inside, and after a few hours, exits. It's clear that this is where the young lady we've seen him with on the first night resides. She walks him outside, wearing not much more than a robe. They say their goodbyes. As he begins to back away towards his car, she opens up her robe and reveals. That's disgusting. That's sick. She opens up her robe, reveals to him her charm, which causes him to rush back into her arms for a few more moments. All right. Cool. Cool. Good to know. Aaron, you contacted us when Matt got a phone call and had to leave mm -hmm. due to another service request. 
air detective was on standby. Yeah. And followed Matt. Now he bailed out on, on Thanksgiving. family dinner. Yeah, with my family. So it's really important to them. He's at her house right now. If you want to continue. Yeah, yeah, I want to continue. There. Aaron, let me go ahead and call the detective. I'll just let him know that we're on our way. All right. If there are any changes or any updates, if he leaves, he'll tell us. But we'll find out exactly what's going on right at this moment. Yeah, we're on the move right now. And she's, uh, and she wants to continue. Uh, so evidently there's a, there are another, there's another couple or two and more people that are having dinner with them right now. Okay. How far do you think we are? I think we're about five miles. Okay. We got about another five miles. We got the address. All right. We'll look for you when we get closer. Because we're going to someone else's home, we probably need to follow a pretty strict protocol. So please, I'd like to encourage you. <laughs> not to run ahead and and go directly into the house, okay? I can't make any promises, but all I can say is I'll try. <laughs> okay, well. <laughs> it's the best I can do right now, Joey. Is this it? There's his car, yeah. Everybody out, everybody out, everybody out. Are you sure? We're coming in. All right, cameras were. Yeah, we're, we're, hey! Get in Whoa. Whoa, hey! Yeah, hey. Good for you. you! Happy Thanksgiving! Here? Coming up, the conclusion. Now he bailed out on, on Thanksgiving. family dinner. He's at her house right now. Hey! hey. Good for you! you Happy doing? Thanksgiving! What are you doing? Yeah, who? What am I doing here? Do yeah. you people know who the. I am. Uh, do you? I'm supposed to be here. Yeah, I, but I'm here? not. Shut up. What are you, you doing? You shut up. on my family for this? For this? You garbage? Can't. That was good. For you. No, you don't. No. Oh, no. good. Right. At your house? You get yeah. away from my husband, you no. garbage. Well, you. Hey, hey, hey. You. Oh, you. Get the Aaron. away from me. How about you? Garbage? Aaron. Garbage? What? Do you what? No, stop. Yeah. You stop? No. This isn't your house. You Wait you need to get out of no. my house right well, now. Oh, don't oh, tell me what to do. You know what you need to do? You get to away from my husband. Aaron. This is my husband. You get hey, what are you doing? You're yeah, supposed to be your families. Back. Yeah, with you. No, you told me not to go. I never told you not to, to go. You had to work? Family you had to work on counting her nasty badge that got me chlamydia? We worked for you. What you? You got chlamydia from one of your boyfriends. Whatever. I got it from that trash ass. Fake fat ass hey. whore! What? Uh, Fight! Hey, hey, hey. You! What's up? Break it up, man. Get the off me, you fat ass! You'll crush my ass with that fat ass! Keep talking. I'm the yeah. one who's hey, you're the one who started it. Whatever. What you're the, the f ever? You started this. What? You started this. How did I start this? this marriage has been over for a long time. <laughs> what the f is that? Get out of my house! Right now, come you on, need to leave. Garbage. Oh, come on. Ladies, oh, come on. get out of my house. You. Hey, what? hey. Aaron. Get what? out. Aaron. Right now. Look, Aaron. I don't know you. Aaron. Do you know about me? I do, but you know what? We're happy. You're happy. We yeah, she happy. makes me. You don't. She makes me happy. Okay. You. <laughs> you know what? You don't. Matt. Okay. Well, Matt White. You say Matt. That before. You know what? Do you know what the I have Here. done for you? Here. I have been supporting put you. Put that in your mouth, huh? Put, get, put it in your mouth, you piece of You, what the do you think you're doing? I've what never done know? anything wrong to you. I'm calling the police. I don't know. Right now. I've never done anything wrong to you. Get out. I've been trying. I've been working. 
No, you're going you to school? No. What the have you been doing? Fixing toilets? You piece of trash! Look, man, I gave up that law crap because I didn't wasn't happy with that. At least I'm working with my hands. I'm having fun. It's you're having good work. fun? Yeah. You're not 20 years anymore. Your way. Don't yeah. Cops can suck my. Up. I don't yeah, think cops are on their way. You know, get, get, out. get out. All of y'all need to go. Just go. You don't tell me what to do. Get out. Been, how long has this been going on? How long has this been going on? Get out. You, you know what? Leave. Come on, Whatever. It's in your house. He doesn't care about Matt, you, sweetheart. Oh, yeah? Yeah? Hey. Garbage? Yeah. What? 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 Try. Fun. Try yes, something. Sir. I already did. You're yeah. the one with the mashed potatoes all Oh, oh, is that it? Is that it? Yeah. All right. Get ladies. What? Hey. All right. Aaron. Garbage. Yeah. Garbage. Hey, no, it's time to go. Police are on the way. What? You need to leave. Police are on the way. Welcome here. I mean, what? Yeah, Y'all aren't invited. Y'all aren't invited. Y'all you don't tell me what to do. Don't you. Don't you. My way. Watch it. Easy, easy, easy. No, it's time to go. Yeah, it's go. time what? to go. Oh. Garbage. <laughs> Get over here, you damn Look okay, here. Let's get her out. Let's get her out. Let's get her out. That's it. Let's take her out. Enough. Hey, leave enough. her alone. That's enough. You leave her alone. No, I'm not gonna leave. You. You. Look, this is over. You. Hey, you know what? Here, take this ring. It's yours now. Oh boy. I don't want. It. Original. I want it. Ass. Get, get, get her back in here. It was up to her. Oh. oh. Right now, leave! Right now! Cops are coming. Get out! Come. It's time to go. All right, it's time to go. I'm done right. with you. Good. Done Trash. With you. You've been done with me. Damn right. Everybody I know. Dead be hey. Hey. Let's go. Get out. All of your camera crew, go. Go. Were you able to get any any answers at all from from Matt? No, of course not. I'm not surprised at all. This show did nothing. <sighs> nothing. Just proved everything is all it did. <sighs> but isn't that the essence of what we set out to do? Was I guess the answer would have been nice. All I got was mashed potatoes in my damn eye. But for now, James Shepard works as a bodyguard who tries hard to protect his relationship. As red flags come to his attention, James summons help from cheaters to determine the truth. Sarah now, I mean, it's not, it's, it's not the same Sarah. Uh, the thing that attracted me to Sarah was it was definitely her compassion, her gentleness, her, uh, her forgiveness. One thing that stood out about Sarah is she would never, ever raise her voice. Now it's like she goes off for the slightest thing. Um, if I ask her why she didn't pick up her phone, there was, there was a time before where she would break her neck to pick her phone up just to let me know she was okay. Now she's really short with me. Uh, She's become very condescending. It's, 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 it's as though she's trying to push me away. Sarah Smith, age 26. She's become very condescending. It's, 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 it's as though she's trying to push me away. Sarah Smith, age 26. A barista accused of brewing up a foul concoction in her relationship. Cheaters headquarters dispatches a squad of agents to the suspect's residence. After some time, Smith makes her presence known. Leaving her apartment and covertly followed by the cheater's team, the suspect drives to a supermarket. Smith meets up with an unknown male. As the two enter the store, it becomes apparent to cheaters that the relationship goes beyond a platonic friendship. I'm basically paying for everything. There's this desire for her to always want to be at work. and. I'm not saying where the money's going. She doesn't really have anything to show for it. Man, I've been doing everything that I've been doing since day one. Um, aside from me not spending all day with her due to the fact that I have another job, I'm still putting forth an effort to still have our date night, our movie nights, and spend that quality time together. Despite the fact that the new job is 
it's, it's taken a little more out of me. I'm, I'm uh, still making a concerted effort and making her number one in my life. But I just don't feel like she's reciprocating that these days. Inside the store, the overly friendly couple shops for a few items. Some time later, the suspect and her mysterious friend leave the store. The pair holds hands and kisses quickly before entering their respective vehicles. The suspect leads her unknown partner back to her residence. The illicit couple goes inside. After a while, the unknown male exits the apartment alone. As the man leaves, it signals an end to the night of surveillance. If Sarah's cheating, there's, there's, there's no way I can forgive her. I'm, Sarah knows what I've what I've been through, and and we, there's 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 no way to resolve this. If she's cheating, it's over. There's, there's nothing we can do to reconcile it. Um, I know she's going to have a lot of excuses. Um, perhaps she's going to try to justify it. But it's, it's not going to hold up. Cheater's agents continue the stakeout. At some point, Smith's companion arrives and enters the suspect's apartment. Sometime later, Smith emerges with the male, now identified only as Joel. The dynamic duo hop into the Batmobile. Smith and Joel drive to the city garden park. Holding hands romantically, the twosome finds a secluded spot near a gushing fountain. Smith grabs a seat and entices Joel to join her. The pair spends quality time with each other by the fountain. After a while, Joel and Smith get up to enjoy the rest of the gardens. The suspect nuzzles and kisses her companion as they make their way through the park. Eventually, the adulterous couple ends the sojourn at Joel's vehicle. Ever the gentleman, Joel packs his date carefully into his car. The suspect's bow drives them both back to Smith's home. Joel gently helps Smith exit the car and receives a sweet kiss for his efforts. Waving goodbye to his heartthrob, Joel leaves ending this day of surveillance. Under cover of darkness, the cheater's team sticks to the game plan. Joel arrives. The man goes inside to pick up his lady love. The suspect rides with her companion to an ice cream shop. Smith and Joel go inside and order up a couple of sweet treats. The suspect and her illicit boyfriend step outside to find a quiet spot. Smith and Joel sit down and enjoy their cold snacks and warm relationship. After a while, the pair works their way back to Joel's car. Tailed by cheaters, Smith and Joel drive back to the suspect's apartment. As Smith allows Joel to stay the night, Cheater stays up collating all information for a concerned James. Coming up, the confrontation. Now that the suspect's deceit crystallizes, Cheaters carries out the plans for disclosure to James. Hoping for the best, but expecting the worst, James preps himself for bad news. James, first thing I'd like to say is thank you for coming out this evening. I understand that, you know, you got a lot going on right now, so just get right to it. As you know, we have conducted our investigation. That's why you are here. Exactly. Before I show you our evidence, I just want to forewarn you, you could find it disturbing, you could find it upsetting, but it's just to get you the truth, man, really to get you an answer to what is going on in your relationship. Are you ready to see what we've come up with? Yeah, I have to, yeah. All right. James, we begin our investigation outside of Sarah's house. A few moments pass. We see her walking down the stairs. I notice she hurt her foot. How exactly did she do that? She fell at work, uh, supposedly. Supposedly fell at work, that's yeah. what she said. Okay. Well, after walking down the stairs, James, she gets into her vehicle and she leaves her home. She drives for some distance and she arrives at a supermarket. That's when we see Sarah park her vehicle. She gets out and then she meets up with this gentleman in the red t-shirt. I'm gonna stop it right there. You recognize that guy? Oh, who the f is that? You've never seen him before? Then. No. They walk into the supermarket together. That's when we see our detective get a shot of them getting various items, shopping at the market. They then exchange a kiss on the cheek. He grabs his goods. She gets into her vehicle. Okay, well, after they finish up the shopping, James, they leave in separate vehicles and return to her home. That's when we see that gentleman walk inside with her. And a while later, he comes out, he gets back into his vehicle, and he leaves the premises. 
Continuing on with our investigation, James, on this day, we're outside of Sarah's home. That's when we see that gentleman pull up. He walks up the stairs. Little fat ass pig. He walks down the stairs with Sarah, gets into the vehicle, and they leave. As our detectives follow them, they arrive at an ice cream parlor. Oh, perfect. We see him park the vehicle. They both get out, and they go inside to get some ice cream. Fat kid style. After they get their ice cream, you can see the two of them actually go outside and sit together at a table. During this time, James, she receives a phone call. What you're about to hear is the audio from that conversation. Tell me if you can remember this day, let alone when you talked to her. Now, as you see, she hangs up the phone after completely lying to you, man, and goes and sits down and finishes her ice cream with this complete stranger. We see them go back to the vehicle, they get inside, and they leave. As our detectives tail them, they arrive back at Sarah's residence. That's when we see both of them get out of the vehicle, and he stays the night. What? Spent the night? Spent the night at your girlfriend's home. James, we got a location on the two of them right now. They're at a park eating dinner together, trying to get romantic. If we get in the vans right now, we can bust them. Are you ready? Let's go get his fat ass. All right, right this way. We're pulling up right here. This is the park. But just remember that, you know, we're here to get you the truth. Yeah, the truth. There's our guy right there. All right, you ready? Yeah. Let's do this. Everybody out. You ready? It is mother. They're right there. Hey, babe. What's going on? You guys doing all right? No, sit down. Sit down. <laughs> Who is this? Hi. What are you doing? Um, just hanging out. Yeah? Sarah, hanging who, out. who's what? this gentleman? Um, who, yeah, who is this? This is this Nice is to meet you, buddy. I'm Joel. Who you guys drinking? Do you guys have any extra glasses? No. Joel. Do you know that this is her boyfriend? Yeah. No, I For a year and a half? I don't. You have no idea? Oh, don't worry about that. He's our bitch now. Really? So she, she didn't tell you anything like that? No, she didn't tell me. What did she tell you exactly? Eat up. We've been together for six Come months. Come here, talk to me. For six months? I, I didn't mean for it to get this far, and I... So how far... Get this far, and I... So how far was it meant to go? I mean... Eat it. I, I really honestly, good. I meant... Eat it. Just tell him that I didn't want to see him anymore, and it wasn't ever meant to get this far. She got my pictures everywhere over there. What's your problem? What's your problem, buddy? What's your, what's your problem, buddy? You're mine. Ah, everything that belongs to Sarah belongs to me. Bring it over here. Coming up next, the conclusion. You guys doing all right? No, sit down. Joel. I, I didn't mean for it to get this far. Eat it. Really good. Eat it. No. What happened then? What was the lack of communication? Because with what he with what he told me, he told me that this has been this is this weird stuff's been going on for a while. That's why he called this in the first place because he wouldn't. Sir. I honestly, I meant to to talk to him about it, and I I just never took the time. I never. I guess. Me too afraid to or something? Yeah, I mean, he's kind of an intimidating dude. Orky! Get over here! I'm talking to you! You got something to say to me? Security. Get up, man. Something to say to me? Get up. Get up, man. Hmm? Get up, man. Oh, ah. Hold up, let me get it locked in there. Let's get it in there good. Oh. You know, you got him running around chasing that guy that had no idea that he was even your boyfriend. Yeah, I, I should have said something to him a lot sooner. What happened? I mean, I think you owe him some explanation. Yeah. Um, 
honestly, the babe, I met him in high school, and I, I never meant for this to get any further than just a, a casual friendship. So what is this, casual friendship? Yeah, casual friendship. You haven't friendships. had time for me in about a month now. Yeah, so, we're, so what are you gonna do now? Because I'm out of the picture. I'm not done with him, but he won't be much when I get done with him. You got He's any more probably... high school friends? You have nothing else to say, sir? I mean, you have this elaborate you know, dinner table right here with candles and everything. I had to put some thought into it. So I'm sure you, I mean, you have nothing to say about yeah. this at all. So, so who is this? Who am I? Who are you? Joel, did I she didn't tell you, she, she, she didn't tell you anything you? about this? She didn't of, tell about me her about boyfriend? this at all. She, I didn't know she had a boyfriend. Really? So when you guys were having ice cream together and she, she walked away for a phone call, who did she say that was? She just said it was one of her girlfriends. Really? Yeah. Just on site. What, what is this? You're right. I, I apologize. I what mean, did he take all your... I'm going to say that's going to make this any what, better. What can he do for you? What, did he take your high school test for you? <laughs> Is he paying bills? Honestly, he's become one of my best friends, and that's all it started out and, as. And so and what, and what about me? What, I mean, what happened to us? I mean, what happened? When did it go bad? What did I do wrong? Besides, yeah, what, what did he do wrong? Sacrifice everything for you. You didn't do anything wrong. You didn't do anything wrong. Really? And you just, it's just, it's all you? Dude, I didn't know. It was just for you. You know? <sighs> Please. Just sit and talk with me for a minute. Talk about what? Huh? Babe, I didn't mean for you to find out like this. Yeah. Our relationship is over. Did she ever come to your house at any point in time? Because when we investigated you guys, I mean, she was always at, I mean, she was always at her house with you. Exactly. And she never came over. She, she never came over? over? What was her excuse for that? She didn't really have one. I just thought I was being polite coming over there every time. I was going to end it with you, James. Yeah. Bet you were. I bet you were. I hate you. Please stop. I hate you. James. Dude. James, he didn't know. James, don't take this out on him. He didn't know. Yeah, he knew something. Honestly, what? How can you say he didn't know? Why wouldn't you tell him? Or why wouldn't you just say something to him? Because I was thinking that I was going to end it with James before I was going to do anything further with him. Six months ago while you're still with James? James, what do you want to do, man? This is ultimately up to you. I fell in love with him, okay? And I was going to end things with you, and I didn't do it the right way. If you want him, if you want him, you can have him. <laughs> James, please. It's not worth it, man. He didn't do this, I did. You wanna load up and get out of here, man? Yeah, yeah, Please. of course. Yeah. yeah. I'll be back to get my things, okay? I'll be over. I'll be outside my door. Outside your door? Hop on in. Load up. I'm sorry, okay? I should have said something to you. Please, Joel. Just one more chance. I don't know if I can do it. Please. You know what? I don't know what her problem is. I, I honestly, your chick does not want to say a damn thing about what she's done wrong. She was literally a deer in the headlights and at a loss for words. She didn't seem to care, man. I need my Well, I gotta get to my car first, genius. At the end of the day, she screwed up, she cheated on you, and she lied to that guy as well. But of course, you know, it does take two to tango. You're really gonna leave my ass here. I'm really gonna leave your ass here. Coming up for the paycheck. 
updating plugins. Let's tear this place apart. Finish where they started. <laughs> Anyone gunning for this girl better be ready. Is it my husband? Seven assassins, fourteen exosuit pilots, the entire collective. Shut down. Uh, uh, uh. Double kill. An ally has been slain. I guarantee. 